Now, when we click on the engine diagnostics window, you're going to notice that you've got a couple of submenus as well. You've got general, airflow, misfire, DTCs. We'll address these each in order. The first thing we're going to do is take care of in this general section, you notice here that you've got the catalyst diagnostic test and post O2. Obviously, with a race car, we don't have a catalytic converter anymore, so we're going to disable the catalyst test. Obviously, we don't have the rear O2s anymore. These would be your downstream post -O uh, catalytic O2 sensors. We disable this test as well. Throttle position sensor, we don't have to worry about this because we're using a stock style throttle body. However, in the diagnostic test towards the bottom here, you're going to notice the enable temperatures for the 101, 106, and 121 codes, the P codes. This is basically the window that these tests are allowed to operate in. What we're going to do is set these temperatures to a window that this ECM will never see while we're racing this car. So we basically take this temperature up. I usually use these numbers of uh, the values of 270 to 274. Obviously, the ECM should never be in that territory. For the P0068, this is basically the MAP versus MAF correlation test. And since we've got a cam, uh, cam in this car, pretty mild cam, it's not a wild cam, it's, you know, it's just mild, it's warmed over to give this engine a little more power, uh, we obviously are going to have a different correlation. Instead of trying to go and map that correlation out, it's a race car, we don't need that. We don't need this for emissions purposes or diagnostic purposes. So what we do is simply put this up to 8,000 RPM to disable P0068. Now once we've got this taken care of, we go over here to the airflow section just to show you what you've got here. Mass airflow frequency fail high. Anything above this value of 14,500 will fail the mass airflow sensor. Anything lower than 1126 will do the same. I generally leave these values alone because obviously if the mass airflow sensor falls out of those ranges, um, we obviously get a diagnostic code that'll come up and our check engine light will turn on. Little LED on the dash let us know that the mass airflow has failed. Uh, map sensor, you don't have to adjust these codes either, these uh, values either. This will get adjusted automatically when you switch over to a custom operating system. Um, when you end up choosing two bar speed density is available for this operating system, the software will automatically change these for you. And SCIP is simply supercharger inlet pressure. These obviously stay the same as well. The next thing we're going to do is over here to the misfire section. In misfire, we are going to make some changes here. Instead of just deactivating these in the DTCs, what we're also going to do is go through each one of these tables and put in a maximum value to make sure that none of our misfire diagnostics kick in while we're racing. This obviously will prevent the vehicle from going into a limp mode or, of course, turning on a distracting check engine light for the driver. So once we've changed all these values, you can go through all of these tables and change all the values to the maximum 32,767. When you've gone through and you've changed all these tables to the max, again, save the file. And once you've saved this, the next step that we're going to do is go over here to the DTCs. Now, when we click on the DTC section here, we open up the DTC window, which you'll notice on your left hand side, you've got all of your diagnostic trouble codes. In the center here, you've got a description of what the trouble code is. And you've got a service engine soon enable switch. This enables or disables the service engine soon lamp, malfunction indicator lamp, check engine light. Those, those are all basically interchangeable. They're all the same thing. It's your funky little light on the dash that tells you that there's something wrong with the EFI system. And you've also got an error mode reporting switch here. This uh, reporting switch, when you click on this, you'll notice that you've got several options. In the case of selecting zero, Basically what will happen is when the diagnostic test is run, the check engine light will turn on immediately with the first air. Selecting level one, the MIL light turns on with the second air. Two, no MIL light at all, uh, but the code will, the diagnostic code results, the test, the, it'll still end up getting stored in the ECM memory. This way, if you have this particular value uh, enabled here, number two, let's say you've got a problem with your, uh, in this case, it's your left front wheel speed circuit. If we have no MIL light indicated, should that front wheel speed sensor fail, we'll end up getting a situation where the diagnostic results are stored in the ECM memory, but no check engine light will ever turn on. Um, this is handy if there's something that you want to have activated where you don't need it to bother the driver while he's racing, but you'd like a diagnostic result when you interrogate with a scan tool or, of course, your VCM scanner software. Now, what we're going to do is scroll down here to the actual powertrain codes, and what we're going to do 
is disable the codes that we know we don't need. So since we have a CAM, we don't need the P0068 code, map versus math, throttle position correlation. We're basically going to uncheck the SES enable, and we're going to, in our mode, we're going to switch it over to no error reported. We're going to do the same thing with our 101, 106, and 123 tests, because those we no longer require either. Now remember, we did disable these through the use of the engine RPM being set previously at 8,000 RPM, as well as the temperatures that we had it set at. So once we've gone through and we've changed these values, the next thing we're going to do is go over down to our oxygen sensors. Now, quick word of advice, what I normally do, I leave as many of these diagnostic tests running as possible. The reason being is that when you do end up trying to determine what's wrong with this particular vehicle, uh, this engine, should something go wrong, the more diagnostic tests that are running, the easier your job of determining where the fault lies. However, what we do want to do is make sure that we deactivate any kind of tests that we no longer need that don't make sense in the racing environment. So obviously in the case of these O2 sensors, when we go through our O2s, we don't have the secondary, the downstream O2s, the post-catalytic. So we're basically going to eliminate all of these from error reporting. Now we're going to do this for all of the O2s, the rear O2s, all these switches and error reporting modes for both bank 1 and bank 2. Now once we've done this, we can save our file. We're just going to go down quickly and eliminate the rest of these post O2s. And as you go through this list, the best thing to do is to go down simply line by line through this entire list and determine what needs to be done. Now as an example here, you've got trouble codes for system too lean or too rich, bank one, bank two. These are codes P0171172. Uh, any of you guys that run an independent repair shop, you've probably seen these codes a bunch of times. I like to leave these codes on because a properly tuned vehicle, I don't care if it's a race car, street car, whatever, if it's properly tuned, these codes will never activate. The diagnostic tests will run, but the codes will never get logged, logged because there's simply no fault as far as the tuning is concerned, the air fuel ratio. However, these will come up if you ever develop an injector leak or an O2 sensor goes bad, anything along, those nat along that nature, um, something that does genuinely develop a fault. So I like to leave these particular tests on. Now, we can continue to scroll down. We'll take a look at some more of these DTCs. Now, as you notice here in the section here with the cylinder injector circuit, uh, this is basically, these are diagnostic tests that'll run and, of course, let you know if your fuel injector circuit is open, if there's a cut in the line. When you first install the EFI system in the vehicle, obviously, these are handy to have. Again, this kind of falls under the same category of don't deactivate these codes, leave these codes active and running. Uh, you'll notice you've got uh, some codes for throttle position sensor. Any of these codes, we want to keep all of them. Uh, one code that we do want to eliminate, here you've got P0300, random misfire detected. Again, we've got a mild cam in the car. We don't want to report anything that the computer perceives as a misfire simply because the cam having a rough idle. And in this particular car's case, since it has no flywheel, it's literally got a four and a half inch button clutch. Um, and the starter is moved inboard on the bell housing for that to accommodate that. It's a quartermaster setup. We literally have no flywheel. This vehicle is going to basically idle very roughly at 1500 RPM. Uh, this is something that would drive the, risk, uh, the uh, misfire codes nuts. So this is where in the diagnostic section we deactivate it. Back in this misfire section, we went over here and entered in the value of 32767 in all of our misfire tables in this DTC section. This is where we go and deactivate that same test. Um, the other thing that we're going to do, we're going to leave all of our knock sensor codes active because we do have knock sensors on this car. And now what may happen is you may end up getting some false knock readings when you're doing dyno testing if you've got a big, heavy cam. If you've got a big cam, lots of lift, lots of duration, that can sometimes create a situation where lifter noise will end up creating false knock. Obviously, when you're tuning, you can determine whether or not that's the case. I still like to leave these codes active because uh, the system does learn as well. Cam position, ignition coil codes, we're going to leave. The other thing is we continue to scroll down. You'll notice you've got EGR codes, secondary air. Again, code P0420, catalyst efficiency test. This is another one we're going to deactivate. You've got two of them in here, bank one and bank two. So deactivate your catalytic tests. 
On this side here, you've also got all of your evaporative uh, emission equipment systems. So all your, for all your EVAP, your canister purge, all of these values here, uh, or switches I should say, we're going to eliminate all of this. We don't have an EVAP system. Same thing with fuel level sensor. We're going with a fuel cell in this car, so we don't need any of this. So basically it's going to be the same thing. Turn off the check engine light, change all of the error reporting so that no diagnostic codes are stored in memory. The computer doesn't even bother with these tests. This is the easiest way to do it. Now again, when you go through, you deactivate all these. We don't have to bore you with all of that. Um, next ones that we come down to down here, the EVAP emissions, we got one more of those here. Again, deactivate it, no error reported. Vehicle speed sensor, in this particular case, we will keep this. And the reason we're going to keep this, we do want some idle control. Um, there are certain parts, uh, algorithms that require vehicle speed. We're going to keep this connected. So we're going to have a custom setup on this trans that will give us a speed sensor signal. Um, as we continue to move down, you're going to find certain codes that you don't want to touch. Absolutely not. Internal control uh, module memory. Uh, this is for checksum error. Obviously, when HP tuners uh, is used to program the PCM, the checksum is changed. This works out correctly. You'll notice on some lesser brands of software, they don't change the checksum. This ends up being an issue here, this code P0601. This I leave activated because when you're using proper software, like HP Tuners does when they change the checksum error, you will be able to tell if your PCM has an issue when you've got this programming error and so forth, internal control memory errors. So definitely keep that alive. Make sure that those stay on. You've got EEPROM errors, again, sensor reference voltage. Uh, in this case, that's your 5-volt circuit that's going to run your sensors. You want to make sure you keep all these on because they'll help you diagnose in the case of an issue. Uh, upshift, skip shift. This is for your CAGs. Here, too, we're going to eliminate this. We took care of this in our trans section to make sure it doesn't turn on, but we're also going to eliminate the diagnostic test. Now, as we continue down our list, we're going to keep looking for the ones that have the check marks just to keep things easy. You'll notice clutch pedal switch. Here, in this case, the check engine light is enabled. We're going to disable that. Right above it, you've got another clutch pedal. Again, no check engine light on this one, but it's, it's enabled on the diagnostic in general. We're going to deactivate both of these. Make sure that no tests are run. Traction control down here, you'll notice that test is run as well, but no check engine light result. We're going to deactivate that test as well. Now, as we continue down the list, again, you want to just look for things that don't make sense to you. Now, you'll notice here, P1133 and 1153, these are HO2, the front heated oxygen sensors, the upstream, the front O2s that are responsible for trim and closed loop. This is insufficient switching sensor uh, test. What we're going to do, even though we do have upstream O2s, we do want this vehicle to run in closed loop when we're part throttle, we are going to deactivate these, and the reason being that we're running long tube headers. Now, when you're running long tube headers on your race engine, these uh, particular tests may get affected by that because of the transition time that the vehicle normally sees. When you've got the O2 placed in a, a stock manifold, stock exhaust manifold, it delivers a different signal than if you take that same oxygen sensor, move it two, three feet away on a long tube header. That's the reason we deactivate these. This is just going to be a code that comes up and gives us a headache, even though the vehicle may actually be running properly. So again, Moving down the list, we're just going to look for other things that don't make sense. Something like this, 1258, where you got coolant temperature, uh, over temperature rather, protection mode. This is something that you might want to consider leaving in because, again, if the vehicle gets too hot, it's probably not going to hurt uh, the driver knowing that he's got that situation going on. Catalytic temp sensor, uh, this is something that we don't need. So, again, we're going to eliminate that. And, again, this is all we're doing is just going through our list, making sure that what's there um, obviously, when we go through and go through all the uh, ones that are checked, in some cases you're going to see the others that are not checked. Same thing, we can deactivate the ones that we see that are obvious. As we continue to go through, one of the things that we're going to do is make sure that we address every single one that is checked off. However, once we've gone through and we've checked everything to determine whether or not we need it, I like to then go back to the very top of the list and start all over again. Just double checking. Look at the ones that are checked off, but also anything that doesn't have no error reported. When you come across one that isn't checked, but it does have an error reporting, what we want to do is just double check it, scrutinize it, and again, ask ourselves, do we need it? So for instance here, transmission fluid temperature over temp. It's not checked off, but we see that a diagnostic test runs. 
In the case of this Jericho, it's not going to do us any good. So again, disable that diagnostic test. If you go through and re-scrutinize everything, looking at the error reporting mode, you'll have taken care of these the first time around. The second time around, scrutinize your error reporting mode just to make sure you've got everything checked off. This is just going to prevent headaches down the road when you're testing and running the car in real, real life. So once you've got this all taken care of, you've scrutinized it, used some common sense, go back, save your file, and now basically what you're going to do is you're done with your diagnostic section. Now you're ready to go over to the engine section.